John Lonergan worked in the Irish Prison Service for 42 years and is best known as the long-term governor of Mountjoy Prison and a strong advocate for reform of the criminal justice system. Since retiring from Mountjoy in 2010, Lonergan has embarked on a career as a public speaker, author and TV presenter. His examination of the Irish education system, John Lonergan's School Principles, was broadcast on RTE earlier this autumn. Welcome to Thal TV, Mr. John Lonergan. Thank you very much, Stephen. The, yeah. the governor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ex, ex governor. Ex, yeah, yeah. A lot of, yeah. Uh, so, what are you up to now that you're, you're no longer in, in Mount Joy? Um, I'm doing lots of different uh, voluntary work or associated with many voluntary organisations. Um, on a few boards like Bernardo's, the Archways, the Cares Association. Um, I talk a lot to parents of teenagers. Um, I don't think I've changed at all since I retired. I, I, yeah. I, I believe that I, what I, you know, what I tried to put into practice while I was in working in the prison system was exactly the same as what I'm saying now. Is that there's, you know, it is all about positivity, trying to, trying to t tap into the, po you know, the positive in a person, trying to encourage rather than to condemn, um, and to, you know, a, a belief that everybody has potential to, to do good and bad, yeah. and uh, if we concentrated on the good, uh, you know, of the people that I certainly worked with. Uh, uh, the, you know, you got, I, I was never but amazed at the potential they had and, mm -hmm. and the ability they had to turn their lives around, given support. But uh, so it was about giving and encouraging and positivity, and uh, and I haven't changed from that. Yeah, you remind me a lot of uh, Father Peter McFerry. Um, just your approach, uh, your manner, and how you walk with people. You know, really marginalised people. That you kind of see the best in them and, and, and embrace them. Yeah, well, absolutely, and I mean, I know Father <coughs> Peter for many, many years, and he have a long association with him through his visiting of prisons and uh, his interest in prisoners, because quite a number of Peters uh, people would have, you know, have ended up in mm -hmm. prison, and and he, many of the time he he came to visit them, and many of the time he took them out as well, and 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 had a, a welcome for them and and a bit of support for them. So, uh, the the I suppose the philosophy would be very much the same, and it's based on the belief that uh, you know human beings are you know that no perfect human being yeah. and those of those who make it well in life and, and 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 don't fall by the wayside they are very privileged people and very lucky people uh, but for every one of those there's a there's somebody who finds life very tough yeah. uh, and that's not always of their own doing uh, sickness particularly mental health addiction um, there's a whole lot of factors that that can break people and there's you know m most of the people I met in prison they weren't bad people they mm -hmm. uh, they committed bad crimes in some yeah. cases but they were not bad people and given different circumstances and given different options in life they would have been very very successful and that's what I believe in and I still believe that if you intervene in time there's many many young people who would be saved uh, and that means around not just education on its own but intervention around uh, conduct disorders behavior difficulties learning difficulties psychological yeah, difficulties the whole range. Uh, yeah when, and when you think about it in our education system, we don't have intervention. Sometimes until they're 9, 10, 11, 12, a lot of the damage is done at that stage. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, and just from people's perception of prisons or Mount Joy prison that you get through press or through tabloids or whatever, it, I think the impression is that people think or it's, it's portrayed that prisons in Ireland are soft on, on criminals or, you know, um, What's your what's your view on that? Like, I would think that people underestimate the powerful uh, negative effects that being incarcerated, being locked up, has on on the human psyche. Like, yeah. Absolutely, and I mean, you know, anybody just reflects on it. The difficulty most people have, they have never been. Uh, you know, next nine or near a prison, they have no idea what it's like, and they have never, and they're lucky. Uh, but for anyone who is locked up, well, prison is a horrific human experience. And uh, mm -hmm. I keep saying to people, I, I, other than serious illness, and if I had a choice tomorrow morning between serious illness and doing a stretch in Mount Joy, I'd opt for Mount Joy yeah. uh, on the basis that I'd, I'd have good health. But besides, uh, other than than health, there's no, there's no other human experience that I know of that's more devastating and damaging um, and horrific in terms of. Uh, the human being being locked up, being confined, and people forget that because they never have experiences themselves. But being confined, uh, controlled to a very large degree, uh, having to share a very 
tight spaces with, with people that you'd never and want to be slop out with people. Slopping out in places like Mount Joy. Mount Joy is 162 years old since March. Yeah. So are so some of the inmates. So, um, you know, 162 years. There's no other facility that I know of, public facilities, that's still providing accommodation for people 162 years, you know, into its, into its uh, mm -hmm. age. And uh, so prison is a horrific experience. And uh, to be locked up for five or six years in, in a place like Mount Joy, I can assure you and your viewers that it is, it is one hell of an experience and, and a real punishment and anyone that thinks otherwise they, they just don't know what they're talking about we are uh, this is after the Celtic Tiger we're in now in, in recession and it seems like uh, unemployment emigration suicide for a whole generation is now you, you know that's the norm and the I would see especially amongst young men that they feel like they're surplus to requirements in, in, in this country you know what I mean so in terms of what effect that would have on the, the, the future of society in Ireland, what do you think? Is, is I think it has it has uh, has the potential to be a devastating experience for young people uh, if it continues on indefinitely, and the signs are are, are very depressing. Uh, because uh, you know, I mentioned culture, and for instance, as a culture in many areas of Ireland, in middle class, good working class areas, and middle class of Ireland, that education is crucial, and uh, you know, not just second level education, but third level education. But the belief is, if I go to third level education and get some qualifications, I'll also get a greater opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, if that doesn't trans you know transpire, and if people go to third level, get a lot of qualifications, and get nothing at the end of it, will that have a, a depressing effect on them? Will that mean that people will drop out in terms? of employment. Employment is far more important than just income mm -hmm. because it's a psychological thing as well and it's a, it's a, it's a connection for people. Um, immigration, you know, is, is, is a scourge too but at least nowadays a lot of young people that are immigrating they're, they're, they have, they're better qualified and the world is a smaller place. I'm more concerned really nowadays about the people who are, and maybe they're not so young as well, the people in their 40s and 50s who have been made redundant and lost their job. They're, they're particularly vulnerable because mm -hmm. they're probably, maybe, you know, they feel too old maybe be to, to re-educate themselves and to retrain themselves and at the same time uh, a lot of the jobs that were like the, like the building industry that provided huge employment uh, it's going to take probably 10 years before yeah. the, the, the construction industry uh, is revitalised again and that's going to create we've seen it here in the city of Dublin and I saw it in prison where lots of guys who worked you know delivering coal and on the do in the docks and all those are the jobs they're gone there's no jobs yeah. in the local authority sure like the sweeping the streets is what well, it was frowned upon years ago now there's nobody yes, sweeping the streets yeah. There's a machine doing it. So exactly. there's a lots of, of uh, you know, the days of the unskilled uh, labouring jobs are almost gone. Any society that, that ignores or forgets that at the centre of every society must be people, human needs, and the most vulnerable must be our priority. And who are they? The old, the sick, the young. Uh, the unemployed at the moment, the people mm -hmm. who are struggling, they must be at the centre of a civilised society. If we're not able to do that, well then we have, we're, we, we have lost the plot really. John, that was amazing. Great getting to meet you. I haven't talked to you before, but we could talk all day. Uh, thanks very much Just for coming on to Doll TV. Pleasure. And I appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>